Many thanks for joining us again on the newsroom. A federal high court in Abuja has dismissed a suit by a former presidential candidate of the Hope Democratic Party, Ambrose Oburu, against the election of President Muhammad Buhari, who was the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC, in the 2019 election. The suit seeking Buhari's sack was dismissed by Justice Ian Ekwa on three grounds, one of which is that the suit constituted a gross abuse of court process, statute barred, and was an affront to the supremacy of the Supreme Court. The judge also held that the suit was baseless and frivolous. The plaintiff, Oboro, had in the suit applied for an order of the court to declare the presidential seat vacant and swear him in as the authentic winner of the election. The board and management of the Nigerian Railway Corporation has announced the recommencement of the Abuja Kaduna train service, which was suspended on January 27. The announcement was made in a statement by the Director of Operations at the NRC, Niyi Ali, on Monday. The corporation had on Friday temporarily suspended the Abuja Kaduna train services as a result of derailment of KA4 at Kubwa Station. The Department of State Services, DSS, has, says it has arrested some members of an organized syndicate selling the new Naira notes in parts of the country. Although the DSS did not disclose the names and locations of the suspects, the agency said in a statement on Monday that some commercial bank officials were aiding and abating the act. The statement signed by the public relations officer of the DSS, Peter Afanaya, warned that the service would go after those involved in the misconduct. Hundreds of COVID-19 patients will be allowed to leave isolation facilities in Hong Kong from Monday as one of the last remaining pandemic control measures comes to an end after more than three years. According to city authorities, mandatory tests for travelers and a quarter of mainland China border crossings could also be dropped soon. However, authorities say the city will continue to use the Penny's Bay Camp on Lantau Island and the Novetal Citygate Hotel in Tongchong for isolation until the end of next month, but they have kept stays at seven days. In business, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, has said that the federal government will deploy point-of-sales POS agents for cash transfers during the National Social Safety Net Program scale-up. She said this while hosting the Executive Director, Angola, Nigeria, South Africa, constituency of the World Bank Group, Ayanda Dildlo, in Abuja last week. According to the Finance Minister, the program will cost $800 million and will take off in 2023 immediately after the National Assembly gives its approval. The Minister added that the agents will also be deployed so that they can reach rural communities that are unbanked. On the global scene, more than 2,000, two dozen people have been killed and about 150 others wounded in an explosion at a mosque in the northwestern Pakistani city of Peshawar when people had gathered for prayers. Peshawar's police chief, Mohammed Ijaz Khan, in a statement on television, said the capacity of the main hall of the mosque was nearly full at the time of the explosion. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif has condemned the bombing in a statement and ordered authorities to ensure the best possible medical care treatment for the victims and also promised stern action against those behind the attack. In sports, Arsenal winger Mark Winals is set to join championship side Norwich on loan for the remainder of the season. Discussions over the move are now at an advanced stage with the 19-year-old due to undergo a medical ahead of finalising his switch to Carrow Road. The deal will be, straight, will be a straight loan until the end of the season but does not include an option for David Wagner's side to make the move permanent in the summer. Thank you for staying with us on the newsroom. My name is Sinisola Adigo. Bye for now.